Hey y'all, Prophet David Taylor here, coming to you at um, my regular time on Sunday, Sunday 2.30, there's my Periscope audience. Hey y'all, so glad to see you. Welcome to all my Periscope people. Welcome to, uh, welcome to all my Facebook people. God bless you. So as you know, uh, I say every week, uh, the reason I repeat myself uh, so much is because I know there are uh, some new people, and I know that uh, everybody is uh, not familiar with the prophetic, and everybody does not follow the prophetic at the same level, and things like that. So I know I repeat myself quite a bit, but I'm just trying to be sure that everybody uh, that's watching, you know, can be brought up to speed or understand what's going on. So feel free while I'm uh, prophesying or ministering or doing whatever, I want you to feel free to uh, ask me any questions or give me any prayer requests um, because I'll definitely be more than happy to pray for you while we're uh, ministering. Okay? All right. So as always, you know, I pray before I come out here every week and ask the Lord what he wants me to give to the body of Christ. And um, so the word this week that the Lord wanted me to, me to minister was the word freedom. The word freedom, that's right. And our scripture reference is the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So it's the fourth book in the New Testament. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 36. A very familiar verse. It says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Okay. So what does the Lord want us to get out of that? What's the point of ministering freedom this week? Well, first and foremost, a lot of saints need to be set free from guilt. A lot of Christians are laboring. Uh, if you're tired all the time, if you're not sleeping well, if you're feeling, if you don't have joy in your soul, many times what you're struggling from is guilt. You don't feel forgiven. And the Word of God tells us that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. That means that, if you read Romans chapter 8 uh, in general, that means that Jesus became your sins on the cross. He didn't just pay for them, he became them. That's why his death was so ugly and brutal. So anything you've done wrong in your past, anything you might not be doing right now, and any sins you might commit in your future, you have already been forgiven for. How do you claim your forgiveness? 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So a lot of Christians aren't necessarily struggling with guilt because you need to feel forgiven. You are forgiven once you confess your sins to God and you're supposed to confess your sins every day if you don't know that. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You're supposed to confess your sins to God every day. You're not supposed to have like a stack <laughs> piling up before the throne of God where you haven't talked to the Lord in a week and a half and you have a pile of unconfessed sin. You're supposed to confess your sins every day. But the good news is, is that once you do, you are forgiven. They are wiped clean, and the blood of Jesus cleanses you. That has to be a daily experience, but you are forgiven. They've already been paid for. Okay? So the Lord wants to set us free from guilt, because guilt is a joy stealer. And if you don't have a joy in your daily walk as a Christian, sometimes it's because you're suffering from guilt. Okay? Another thing that uh, Christians suffer from in terms of freedom is poor health. So if your health is not good, you feel like you're a prisoner in your own body. Well, the Lord wants us to have good health. Okay? He wants to give us divine healing, which you can claim from the scriptures that by his stripes you are healed. And then he wants to give us good health practices so we don't feel like we're prisoners in our own body. Another thing that the Lord wants to set us free from is shame. What a shame. Shame is that feeling you get, that, that sense of conscience, that sense of embarrassment, that sense of heavy self-consciousness, that sense of wrongdoing when you've done something wrong. 
And if you've done something wrong in your past, you can't go back and undo it and redo it. But that is precisely why Jesus died, to free you from that shame. Well, what if people bring it up? The Bible says very clearly that we are justified by faith before God. What that means is that if Jesus' blood is good enough for God to forgive you, then you ought to forgive yourself and forget what people say. If people know anything about your past, people know anything about your flaws, people know anything about your mistakes, they're always going to throw your weaknesses, flaws, and failures in your mistakes. But if God has forgiven you, if God has moved on, if God has told you to move forward, then, as the scripture says, who is he that condemneth? It is God that justifieth. That's also in Romans 8. So in other words, who do people think they are to try to condemn you or accuse you when God himself has forgiven you? When God himself has justified you, that's what that means. Okay? Now here's another big one. Another big one that the Lord wants to set, thing that the Lord wants to set us free from is debt. Actual financial debt. Now, many times when it comes to debt, we get into debt because we have poor financial practices. We don't know how to generate money. We don't know how to manage money. We don't know how to invest money, and so we end up in a world of debt. For you to get out of debt, you must grow in your financial skills and knowledge, because even if the Lord gave you a windfall of cash, if you don't know what to do with it, you're still going to end up in more debt. That's why sometimes people that win the lottery end up worse off, you know, like a year and a half, two years later, they're worse off because they didn't know what to do with the money. So if we're talking about financial debt, God does want you to have financial freedom, but you have to grow in your knowledge of money to get free financially. You have to learn how to generate cash. You have to learn how to generate money. Okay? And you can do it in a variety of ways. You can do it through intellectual property. You can do it through building a business. You can do it through uh, investing. Um... There's different ways, okay? But for you to get to where you want to get financially, you're going to have to grow. But that's where the Lord wants to take you so that uh, you have enough money to give birth to everything you want to give birth to. That's right, because debt is a bondage, and God wants to set us free. Another, now, yeah, I could do a whole, I mean, there's whole books written on that subject. I'm just scratching the surface. I just want you to know that, okay? Because there's, there's you know, a lot to talk about there, but... I want you to have the idea in your head that as a Christian, you are not supposed to be in financial bondage. And if we are, that means that we need to grow financially because that's not where God wants us. Where you're living from check to check and you're stressed out and worried over your bills. Haven't you noticed the feeling you get when you get paid? Haven't you noticed the feeling you get when you feel like you're in the black, when you're on the positive, when your cash flow is positive? Notice that feeling? You're supposed to have that feeling all the time. Mm-hmm. Another thing God wants to set us free from is bad relationships. This one is huge because bad relationships, man, bad relationships are 20 years to life. <laughs> you get into a bad relationship, it's going to impact you. It's going to impact you sometimes for two decades and sometimes for the rest of your life. And so the scripture is full of teachings to show us how to discern relationships on every level. Uh, uh, friendships. Uh, uh, marriage, excuse me, marriage relationships, uh, business partnerships. The Bible, uh, again, I actually am writing a book on one of those because there's so much there. But the Bible, uh, if you want to see some of that, then you have to read the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is full of many little nuggets, many little verses, where the Bible tells you how to pick friends, how to pick a spouse, what kind of person to avoid who to go in business with. All that's in the book of Proverbs. See, so these are very real practical things. I know sometimes with some of our religious uh, backgrounds, we get like platitudes. We get like, you know, pie in the sky stuff. We get abstract concepts, but we don't live in the abstract. We live in the real. And if you're in a wrong relationship, that's weighing on you right now. If you are in poor health, that's weighing on you right now. If you're in a lot of debt, that's weighing on you right now. If you've got a lot of guilt in your soul, that's weighing on you right now. And the Lord wants to set us free from all of that. That's why he died, so we no longer had to be bound. And when the scripture says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Why does the Lord say it like that? 
He says it like that because that means there are other ways that people try to get free. There are many other ways that people try to get free. So the Lord says that he has to be the one that sets you free. Because he's the only one that has all the information about your situation. He's the only one that can tell you the absolute truth about everything going on in your situ situation. And he's a good shepherd, meaning he's the only one that's going to lead you out of that bondage. Because sometimes people talk about freedom and they just end up leading you into more bondage. And a lot of people have had those experiences. So the Lord said he has to be the one to set you free. So I say the same, same thing I say all the time. You have to seek the face of God. Seek the face of God and ask the Lord about every single situation in your life. Ask the Lord about your body and about your health. Ask the Lord about your finances and your career. Ask the Lord about your mental state. What, what kind of thoughts are running through your head every day? Ask the Lord about your emotional state. How do you feel most of the time? And when you think of yourself, how do you feel? Ask the Lord about the state of your relationships, everyone. Friendships, romances, uh, business relationships. And the Lord will show you how to get freedom in every one of those areas because that's what he wants you to live in. Because we are not giving him glory when we live in bondage. Does that make sense? All right. So, uh, again, our scripture reference is, so if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed, and the word today is freedom. Okay, I'm getting a prophetic word I want to release. For behold, I say to you, my people, I die to set you free from all bondage, because bondage comes from the devil, and bondage comes from sin. So behold, I release unto you the anointing for freedom. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So from this day forward, walk in that freedom. Walk in the mindset of being free in every area. Being free, being, being healthy, being financially, fiscally sound, having good relationships, being free from guilt or shame or negative thoughts. Being free from demonic interference through deliverance. From this day forward, walk in that freedom, and I will show you how to realize it step by step and day by day in your life, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Very important, very important that you get your mind right first and realize that you're not supposed to be in any bondage at all. And seek God's face every day to be sure that you're walking in the freedom you need to be walking in. All right. Okay, uh, I didn't get any prayer requests, so I'm going to close out with a quick word of prayer. Thank you so much for joining. You know I appreciate everybody tuning in every week. Uh, you know I count it as an honor and a privilege to bring the prophetic word of the Lord. So uh, I'm going to close this out uh, with a word of prayer. Thank you, O Lord, for setting us free. Thank you, O God, for setting me free. Thanking you for calling us to freedom, to where we're not worrying about demonic influence, where, where we can get any type of demonic oppression broken off of us and we can walk in freedom where we can walk in health and long life where we can walk in financial prosperity where we can walk in healthy relationships we don't have to be in bondage we don't have to be bound up with people that are not that don't have our best interests at heart so we thank you for this call of freedom we thank you for forgiveness we thank you for freedom from shame we thank you that your sins have covered excuse me that your blood has covered the sins of our past and we don't have to live in guilt and that if if you, we are forgiven before you if Jesus blood is good enough for you then it's good enough for us we thank you O oh God for this call of freedom and now I ask O oh God that in the days to come you help us realize it help everyone under the sound of my voice watching live now that will watch this broadcast later to realize the freedom that you have called us to and I thank you for it, and I believe you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some new music for you soon. I don't know if I'll have it ready by next week, but I'll have it ready soon. I'll have my third video. Who is that? Uh, Kiera, pray for you. Uh, what would you like prayer for? So hopefully, I'll have that new uh, music uh, ready for you soon. I will definitely let you know. Yes, Kara, I'd love to pray for you. Uh, please let me know what your prayer request is on my Periscope audience. Family and job, all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come uh, before you on the behalf of Kara, oh God, that 
Whatever her family needs are, oh God, that you be in the midst, that you bring peace, that you bring safety, that you bring wisdom, that you bring forgiveness, that you bring discernment, and that you bring order in her family. And I pray for her job, oh God, if she is looking for one, that you would open the door for employment. If she has one, oh God, that you would give her victory over her enemies, that you would let her be a light and a witness to you on the job and bring her out on top and help her have a spirit of excellence like Daniel and Joseph, that her work might be exemplary and that she might rise to the top in everything that she does. And we give you the glory and we thank you for it and we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, do we have any other prayer requests? Okay, looks like we're clear. All right, well, you're welcome, Kira. God bless you. All right, well, again, y'all, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate you tuning in. I am just, uh, I feel very, very blessed to walk in the prophetic and to be used of God to be able to share what the Spirit of God gives me. So I'll be on next week at my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live and Periscope. All right, I will see you then. Be blessed and have a good week. God bless you.